I was having a conversation the other day with a friend of mine about Casey Neistat. We're both fans of his videos, but at one point my friend turned to me and said, he's great, but he's not a filmmaker. Start spreading the news. For those who don't know, Casey is a YouTuber who comes from a filmmaking background. He had a show on HBO with his brother a few years ago, and now he makes a film every day for his YouTube channel. But rather than ask if he's a filmmaker or not, I think we need to reconsider what we actually consider a film to be. Now we think of filmmakers as people who put some sort of thought into what they're making, or some concept at play. The filmmaker is not just some dude who picks up a camera and starts rolling as his friend nuts himself on a half pipe. But then people probably feel pointing a camera at your own face doesn't amount to filmmaking either, so... You know, a filmmaker is an artist, right? But do we know how long it took for films to be considered art? If you want to see what the debate about film as art was a hundred years ago, just look at the debate about video games in recent years. What the people who argue against games as art don't seem to understand is that new art forms change the standards for what art is. It's pointless to compare Super Mario Brothers to Van Gogh's Starry Night. These things serve a purpose, to decorate some rich person's living room or to kill a few hours between college classes. It's only afterwards they get labelled art. And then there's art for art's sake, but I really don't want to talk about that right now. I mean, look, if you consider yourself a filmmaker, you can go the traditional route, throwing months and thousands of dollars into producing your short masterpiece, touring festivals, getting those little laurels stuck on your poster. Or you can look at the internet, you know, where there's an actual audience made up of people. And you can make stuff for them every month, or every day if you can keep it up. What puts creators off the internet, I think, is the connotations of how closely linked the internet and social medias are with celeb culture. Like when every top Instagrammer is a Kardashian, you can understand people worrying they won't find an audience for something a bit more subtle than buy my lip gloss. But that's why the internet is the new frontier for filmmakers. It's pure wilderness right now. The rules haven't been written yet. If YouTube is 90% makeup tutorials and fail blogs today, it doesn't mean it won't be screening the best films in the world in 10 years time. Let me tell you, if you haven't seen really amazing stuff on the internet, then you really haven't been paying attention. There's so much being created that can make you either laugh your ass off or ask how the hell did they do that? Which you may remember is what movies used to be able to do until they went all... Seriously, how do they do this stuff? Let's look at someone like Vincent Moon. This guy started La Blogotech, an internet exclusive channel that follows up and coming bands and shoots them performing music in public locations. I mean, this channel is mind blowing and some of the work I've seen on it happens to be some of the best cinema I've seen in the last 10 years. For his part, as soon as La Blogotech started to get very popular, Vincent Moon did a very French thing and decided to leave, starting a new channel, La Petite Planète, where he travels around the world filming musicians. This idea of nomadic cinema, sort of, that I had in mind, how could the use of new technologies and, and the road could fit together? How could I edit my films in a bus crossing the Andes? You know, this stuff has the air of Robert Flaherty and the Lumiere brothers about it. It feels like we're seeing things from other parts of the world that we may never otherwise get to see. And that's what's so great about internet films. Where major movie studios are too concerned with their box office takings to give us something new and interesting. It's those who make films for the internet on tiny budgets and have nothing to lose who'll take us to places we've never been before. And I'm sorry to all you golden age of television people, but that ship has sailed. The Sopranos is over, The Wire is over, Breaking Bad and Mad Men are over. Even those who made their names on television are crossing over to the internet now, where they can have some measure of freedom outside the requirements of the studios, or even the expectations of the audience. So is Casey Neistat a filmmaker? Absolutely in my opinion. But trying to compare what he's doing to what other filmmakers have done in the past is the wrong way of thinking about it. What he's doing is more like a David Holzman's diary sort of situation, except every day, and real. And it doesn't make the other more established forms of filmmaking obsolete, it just offers creators more options as to the kind of films they can make. Like maybe you're not as suited to making feature length dramas for the Cannes Film Festival as you are to making stuff for Vine or Vimeo. As long as what you're doing is exciting, what else really matters? <laughs>